to power into kind of a new concept that we have. As, as you probably caught on, one of our philosophies that, that we're pitching and getting great acceptance from a lot of our refinery partners and a lot of our operator partners is that if you take care of something on a regular basis, it's much more cost effective. If you turn a blind eye to it, it just gets more expensive because it's either bigger, deeper, or absorbs into it. <coughs> so whether it's a tank farm, a disposal site, an exploration site, or refinery, you might want to get into some normal hygiene or, or response programs. If you're a produced water hauler, there's possibilities if you normally will have maybe a few gallons get out when your hose is run or you get a hung valve or something. Maybe you want to consider having some diluted product on your truck with a little sprayer that he can actually go ahead and dump it on the spill. Or if you have a service truck that goes around, he can have a little tank in the back of his truck with some diluted product and hit these areas quickly. Again, you hit it fast, you hit it quickly, it goes away fast, just as we've demonstrated. More importantly, if it's a vegetated area, it's not going to go to unvegetated. It may shock the plants, but you're going to stabilize that site quickly and, and be able to respond to it. Probably the most impact is refineries and tank farms and things like that are becoming, or wellheads are, are coming under greater scrutiny from a lot of inspectors because there's not as much exploration going on. So they're now looking at other areas with a little bit more of a fine eye that they didn't really have time to go look at before. Not that they weren't doing their job before, they were just busier and stretched a little bit more. Now they're not doing so many things they have more of an opportunity. So this is a prime example of going into a wellhead. This was actually sprayed down with two different products. One was our pull it out because it was kind of heavy and, and gooey in through these areas while they were setting up the pressure washer. And then as they hit it with the pressure washer, they just had the, the injection of our ultimate basically went from there to there, safe on painted surface, goes ahead and exposes the colors of your valves, cleans off everything for good operation, whether it's working in your maintenance shop, and I'll show you that in a minute, cleaning your equipment or working on engines or parts, and you want a biodegradable or remedial characteristic product. The good thing about this is most of the time if you go ahead and clean this off and it goes into the soil, now all you did was move the problem off of all of that stuff down into the soil. But not with our new cleaning products. Our new cleaning products have the same bioremediation characteristic as our heavy lifting soil RX. So not only are we cleaning with a biodegradable safe product, it also has a remedial characteristic once it hits the soil. Now what we do recommend for our customers when they have sites this bad and we need to clean up more gravel or something that's been stained over a longer period of time, let us come in first and put the Soil RX, which is our heavy lifting remediation product down first, and then go ahead and do the cleaning. Our refinery partners are jumping all over this because a lot of them now are looking at their turnaround costs. And one of the, you know, if you're doing a, a, a major refinery turnaround, you could be spending 10 to $50 million. 15 to 25% of that is cleanup remediation for the crews to come in and do the turnarounds. Well, that's an awful lot of money that if they start cleaning themselves on a day-to-day -day basis, and more importantly, you can actually do better inspections, you can use the valves, your deferred maintenance and things of that nature are a little bit better and it's very cost effective. You know, it was an hour's time with George and, and he had a guy supervising him and 25 bucks worth of product. Hold that picture for a second. The interesting thing on this, the company had put some product on this wellhead and had been sitting there for three weeks. They made some claims. 
and nothing had happened. So I uh, got permission to come in, and as some of you know, I'm a little anal, and I <coughs> <laughs> choke you up. <again. laughs> I took a scrub brush with that pull it out product and thought, well, it works quite well by itself, but I could maybe help it a little bit by just taking a brush and start scrubbing this whole area. And at, after everything was done, not only the well head, but this area was coated as well with uh, oil. You can't really see it in that picture. And in addition to that, the gravel surrounding this well head collective and I said hmm, it took 65 minutes to do that three weeks this pro other product been sitting on it hadn't done anything came in hit boom boom an hour and it was done so to get a little bit better idea uh, this is actually from one of my forklifts the side side shift valve and it just blew out on me a couple of weeks ago. So I went and pulled it off, and before I went and took it in to get rebuilt, I'm like, hmm, I got a great cleaning product. And I know a lot of guys, uh, we've been trying to work with Safety Clean and some of the other parts washer companies, um, and they wanted a little bit more evidence as, as far as how it works. Well, out on exploration sites, you're doing a lot of cleaning of, of different equipment coming back out of the hole and things like that and that usually creates a potential problem with residual hydrocarbons and all of that so we work with a company um, some of you may be familiar with them uh, called NOV they restore drill bits and drilling rig, rig parts and we take care of their wastewater and some of that and they're liking the new products because simply I dropped it on a couple blocks sprayed some ultimate on it, flipped it over, sprayed ultimate on the other side. You could see how quickly it was breaking down all the greases and oils and, and build up. Then I just, I did run, had a glove on, just ran my hand over a couple of the heavy areas, and then I rinsed it off. Now the nice thing about this is normally when I had used cleaners and things like that before for, for my parts, if you notice at the base, and I meant to get a picture of that and throw it in, it was, I threw it on a step on the outside of my warehouse and it's all grass underneath it. Didn't affect the grass at all. Again, all biodegradable, all safe. I rinsed that material off, rinsed it down and in, and I knew it continued to break down the hydrocarbons as well as doing the cleaning. So it's a safe and effective alternative and again, companies are looking for safer ways to do things as well as trying to get a new process in place to where you can clean as you go. And that's effectively where this comes in. What if you had uh, kept your solution after that? Would it have been spent? Would it have been reused? Nope. It, what it would be doing is in the tank, and that's why we're working with a, a couple of parts, parts washers right now, is that the bugs are going to continue to consume. The other components that we have that help do the cleaning and are biodegradable do that job, but the bugs are going to keep consuming. So what we actually think is we're potentially going to get better life out of that parts washer solution, because as it's sitting there, it's going to constantly go ahead and be consuming. The only thing that we're not sure about is long intervals of it not being recirculated because usually a parts washer is used and then it's shut off and they'll come back and do some more parts washers. What we might have to do, because this is an active environment, we may have to have a modified tank and one of our partners have already said, I can do that, just have like an aquarium bubbler. Oh. It only has to be that much just to have a little bit of movement in that drum tank underneath the, the, the actual unit so it keeps chewing up the hydrocarbons. That's the only thing that bugs need is air and food. If they don't have either one of those, primarily the air, they're gonna go sideways in a hurry. So that's the one thing that we're doing from the parts washing side. But we have a lot of our equipment operators exploration sites. Again, that goes back, if they're cleaning their equipment and they've designated an area, and I know it's a contained area, it's still something that they're going to have to clean up eventually when they leave. 
and going back to the part of directional drilling, they now are positioned in one location for an exceptionally longer period of time. So the impact to the environment around that exploration site is now twofold, threefold, fourfold. Because directional drilling, they don't have to keep moving the rigs. They're just going to keep pointing it in a different direction, and the impact in that general area could be significantly greater. So again, if you do it quicker and faster, the cost is going to be much more effective. 